Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to discuss the assumption and the some limitations of Dupit's theory, which is designed for the calculation of the flow rate through the aquifers. So let's start. <music> So the Dupit theory that is given for determining the rate of flow through the aquifer. Now when we talk about the rate of flow that means how fast can we take out the water from the aquifers and for this usually we carry out the two tests which are known as the pumping in test and the pumping out test. These are the two most prominent tests performed for the determination of rate of flow of the aquifer. If we discuss these theories chronologically, the first one to determine the rate of flow was the Dupit theory and based on this theory and modifying certain assumption and putting them to the good use and according to the actual field condition. The next theory was developed by the themes, which we discussed earlier. So now coming on to the discussion regarding the Dupit theory. So the first of the assumption that he had assumed was the velocity of flow that is denoted by a small v that is proportional to tangent of the hydraulic gradient instead of its sign. So if we represent the hydraulic gradient by I, so it is proportional to 10 I and not the proportional to sin I. That is the first assumption. Now how is that valid? So he assumed that the inclination of the water surface because this actual triangle that you are looking at, this is the, this is the part of the drawdown curve. So if the water level dropped to this level from initial this level, so this is the cone of depression. So if we are talking about this particular element that has been zoomed into like this. So this hypotenuse or the slant side that is denoted by DL, this horizontal is the radial direction. So that is the small component along that direction which is denoted by dr and this dh is the elemental value of the height of the water table from the horizontal line that is dh. Now in actual this v is proportional to sin i where this sin i is, is equal to the perpendicular upon hypotenuse so it would be equal to dh over dl. Now when we assume that the inclination of the water surface this theta value that is almost is equal to 0 degree that is very close to 0 degree that is very very small. In that case tangent and the sine values both of them are equal because 10 i will be perpendicular upon base and if this angle is almost 0 degree in that case both these slope distance that is the slant height that is dl and dr both of them will be almost equal to each other. So in that case this sin i can be approximated to be equal to i only which can then further be approximated to tan of i o. It can then be approximated to tan of i. So the velocity of flow that is is equal to the tan i value that is dh over dr that is the hydraulic gradient. That was the first assumption. The next one, the next one, it assumed, the next one, it assumed that the flow is horizontal and uniform 
everywhere in the vertical section so if we take any section let's say this is the one vertical section so across this and into the width so let's say this is the width of the aquifer so in this width in this vertical plane the flow is uniform that means at a fraction of time at a point of time the velocity or the flow properties are not changing with the distance within the flow so this flow is horizontal now if you look closely that how the water is moving towards the pumping well through which the water is taken out so the water is trying to fill in that well and it is moving haphazardly in all the possible directions but this is the actual velocity distribution which is then assumed to be like this in which all the velocity components are parallel to each other and this is the assumed velocity distribution which is the uniform velocity or the horizontal flow condition that is the second assumption for the dupitt theory next one is the aquifer the next one is aquifer is homogeneous isotropic and of infinite aerial extent we will see one by one each of these terms so if we talk about the homogeneity so let's say this is a material and of that we have taken a random cross section so if we consider few points now at all of these points or at all the points within the body if a body is if a body is homogeneous so if we consider a particular direction let's say these are the direction that we are considering that is along the x axis so this is first second third and fourth points so if we consider any property for example here we are talking about the soil and the flow within the soil so let's say this is the flow velocity v1 then v2 then v3 and v4 if at all the points within a body in a particular direction all the properties are same for a material it is said to be the homogeneous material now in addition to this if we consider another material and we take a single point and for that point in all the possible directions that we can assume in all those possible directions we are having let's say this is v1 v2 v3 or all the other directions whatever we are having if the properties are same at a single point in all the possible direction so this tropic is denoting the directions so we are not changing the point we are keeping the point constant but the directions are changing and the properties are same such type of material are known to be the isotropic material so for the dupitt theory the material is homogeneous as well as isotropic so if we combine these two then what will happen so at all of the points in all the possible directions the properties are same that is what is the meaning if both of them are clubbed together separately i have told you and if we combine them together then this will be the meaning that at all the possible points within the body of the material the properties will be same in the all the direction now next term is of the infinite aerial extent that means if we talk about the aquifer then we are talking only about the depth of the aquifer that means the depth of the aquifer is denoted by d but the area the direction the aerial extent that means the longitudinal direction in both the possible coordinates 
that is not measured that is not restricted and into the plane that is also up to the infinite extent so that is why it is said to be of infinite aerial extent then the next assumption is the well penetrates and receives the water from the entire thickness of the aquifer now this is known as the full penetration if the aquifer is receiving the water from the entire thickness as you can see that in the aquifer the first image is representing that the confined aquifer is penetrated with the pumped well up to its full depth that is up to the depth d but in the second case the penetration of the main well the pumped well that is partial so this is d dash which is less than the entire depth so such flow is known as the partly penetrating flow and in that case the flow assumption that we have assumed that the flow is horizontal that is violated because certain amount of the water that is also penetrating through the bottom portion of the well and in that case the flow is said to be the three dimensional flow and that is the violation of the assumption that we have taken for the dupit theory the next one is is that the coefficient of transmissibility is constant at all the places and at all the times now this coefficient of transmissibility is the product of the coefficient of permeability into the width of the aquifer so this is representing that with how much is the water can be extracted out from the aquifer so it should not happen that at one of the place within the aquifer that coefficient is different and at the different place within the same aquifer but during the different season of the year the value of this coefficient of trans transmissibility that is different so it should be constant then the natural ground water regime that is affecting an aquifer that remains constant with the time that means if certain water body if this is the water body which is recharging the aquifer let's say this is the confined aquifer so if this natural ground water regime is recharging the aquifer then it this regime should remain constant with the time and last and the most important assumption is that this flow is laminar and the darcy's law is valid what is this darcy's law that we will study entirely in the next video but what is this laminar flow so when we study the flow it can be categorized into the different layers now these layers because of their minute thicknesses these are known as the lamina so these lamina when they flow over each other the flow happens so if the lamina is flowing in such a way that there is no intermixing of the particle such type of flow that is known as the laminar flow and if there is a random movement or the haphazard movement that resulting in the collision between the different water molecules then such type of flow is known as the turbulent flow so the assumption says that the flow is entirely laminar although the in reality the flow is somewhere between these two now out of all of these assumption the most important assumption and of the importance are the assumption related to the hydraulic gradient that is v is proportional to the 10i and the flow is horizontal which is then reinforced with the last assumption which says that the flow is laminar 
now what happens that when the water is reaching the pumping well this slope is increasing this piezometric surface that attains the greater slope as it approaches the well boundary now because of this the slope assumption that was taken to be small so that this v is proportional to 10i that is valid only if this i was very very small that is almost is equal to 0 degree so if when it is reaching the boundaries of the well the slope is increasing that means this i value is increasing so this assumption will not hold true so that is the first limitation of the dupitt's theory now because of these the parabolic form of the piezometric surface that is computed from the dupitt's theory and that deviates from the actually observed surface and this deviation is so large that this results in the another type of force which is known as the seepage force which is because of the seeping water molecules now in addition to these when the area is decreasing for the flow the velocity increases as it approaches the well boundary so velocity near the well it increases and because of which there is intermixing of the particle and the flow is no longer laminar which again violates the last assumption and that assumption violates the Darcy's law because for the Darcy's law to hold true this assumption is very much that the flow is laminar and this flow is not laminar when it is reaching the boundaries of the well so these are the certain limitations of the Dupit theory now perform in the Dupit theory how is it different from the theme theory and what is the Darcy's law all of this we are going to study in the next video so thank you